I could not care less if they all were murdered in the end, so. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my April wrap-up for 2024. I read a total of 13 books, and I've already talked about the first six that I read on my channel, so if you want to check out those, the link will be down below. But these are the next seven books that I read, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is The Dark Room Etiquette by Robin Rowe, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows 16-year-old Sayer Waite, who is very, very popular and essentially untouchable. But then he is kidnapped by a man who tells him that his entire life has been a complete lie. And it's essentially him trying to cope with that. This was a super interesting read and I was hovering between giving it a 3.5 and a 4 but I did ultimately end on the 3.5 rating. I listened to this book on audio and I definitely think that that is the way you should go with this story. I personally have always been interested in Stockholm Syndrome. I wrote a paper about it in university. It's always just been very fascinating to me. This book focuses pretty heavily on trauma and traumatic experiences and how the human brain deals with those traumas. I think that the relationships in this was probably the best part. They are all so complex and it was really interesting to see how they played out. The reason I ended up giving it a 3.5 instead of the four star rating is the religious aspect. I just personally am not religious so that aspect of the story didn't resonate very much with me and I think we could have gotten the same story without having to be so religious based. But I still had a really good time. I found it very very interesting so I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have is The Way I Am Now. This is the sequel to The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. This, like I said, is the sequel to The Way I Used to Be and we follow Josh and Eden coming back together after the ending of the first book. I really loved how this was a dual point of view book. I think that if we hadn't been able to see inside both Josh and Eden's head during the relationship, it wouldn't have been as strong as a story for me. I really loved how we actually got to see how difficult it was for Josh at times to support Eden after what she had gone through. I think that this is a very true depiction of what an experience like this could be for somebody. I did like the relationship for the most part, but I do think that they were very codependent on each other. I just personally think that Eden treated Josh very poorly at times, which I understand was because of what she went through, but I don't think that that made for a very healthy relationship on either of their parts. I absolutely hated the third act drama in this. I obviously understand why it was there, and I too would be very angry in that situation, but it just kind of felt pointless for their story, but that's just my opinion. I do really like how it ended though. I think that it was a very satisfying conclusion to Eden's story, so I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read Darling Rose Gold by Stephanie Warbler. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, which is very disappointing because years ago I made a 5 star prediction video and this was on it and it was a 4.5. It was so close, but besides the point, 4.5 is still a really good rating. So this follows Rose Gold Watts, who for the first 18 years of her life, she believed that she was very, very sick. No doctor could figure out what was wrong with her, and then she discovers that her mother, Patty Watts, had actually been poisoning her, so she decides to testify against her in trial. Her mother spends five years in prison for her crime, but she has always been adamant that she is innocent. Rose Gold has tried to move on with her life, but now Patty has been released from jail and she needs somewhere to stay, and asks Rose Gold to live with her and her baby Adam. I love a good revenge story, and I was not disappointed by this. I was a little bit because it wasn't a five star, but it was really, really good nonetheless. This book has so many twists and turns that I did not see coming, and I was so excited every single time one of them came up. I really love the dual point of view between Patty and Rose Gold. I love how we never really know which one of them we should trust in this situation. Their relationship was so complicated and twisted, and I could not get enough of it. Both of these characters are so unlikable, and and you never really knew who was manipulating who. They are both very unreliable narrators. The story also changes timelines, so we get the point of view from Patty when she is released from prison, but then we also get the point of view of Rose Gold while her mother is in prison and what she's doing during that time. It is very fast paced. I was on the edge of my seat for the majority of the book. This is my first Stephanie Warble book, but it will definitely not be my last. I'm very intrigued by this author now, so I need to check out the rest of her books. Next, I read We Are All Good People Here. This is by Susan Rebecca White, and I gave this a 
3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Eve who comes from a wealthy southern family and Daniela who comes from a Jewish middle class family. They are best friends but their differences come to the forefront during rush week in the 1960s. They each move on to become a part of the civil rights movement in their own way. They later come back together and reconnect when one needs the help from the other to get them out of a very difficult situation. I do think that this book was rather boring in the first half, but it definitely does pick up pace in the second half, and that's when I became invested in the story. This is an extremely character-driven book, and it was definitely a roller coaster for me. At times, I did not like either Daniela or Eve, but then other times, I really liked both of them, so it was very confusing in my mind. The book follows some pretty difficult topics, such as racism, anti-Semitism, inequality, and social injustice. I really liked that both girls believed in essentially the same thing, but they took such drastic different paths to fight for what they believed in. I also thought it was an interesting avenue to continue the story through Daniela and Eve's daughters. Overall, I do think that it was a pretty thought-provoking book, and I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Rogue Princess. This is by B.R. Myers, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Princess Delia, who must pick a husband in order to save her kingdom, but she dreams of falling in love and connecting with somebody on a personal level. She decides to avoid this fate. She is going to run away and steal a spaceship, but little does she know that the spaceship she takes has a stowaway. As she gets to know Aiden, a thief who just wants to escape his life, sparks fly and they hatch a plan to be together, and it's kind of the story of that. I'm a big fan of fairy tale retellings, so a gender swap Cinderella sounded very appealing to me, but unfortunately I do think that that the book started off very slow and did drag for the majority of it. It did end up picking up pace once a certain twist is revealed, which I then instantly became invested in the story because I really didn't see that twist coming. I did really like Delia as a main character. I think that she was very strong and I did like her personality. I also was a big fan of Shania, her sister. I think that she was a much needed comedic relief and she did have me giggling throughout the scenes that she was in. I really liked Aiden. I think that he was such a surprise for me. He kind of reminded me of Captain Thorne from the Lunar Chronicles. I just think that he was a very sweet character and I really loved his interactions with Delia. I will say that their relationship was a little bit insta-love and I am not the biggest fan of that, but it definitely grows and develops as the story progresses, so I did end up becoming a fan of them together. Overall, a pretty quick read with some fun characters, but did start off pretty slow, so a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read If We Break by Marike Nykamp. I always say this name wrong, so I'm very sorry if I did, but I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows five used-to-be friends who decide to spend a weekend in a cabin in Arizona. Arizona to play a final round of a role-playing game they all created before they graduate. There is a murder mystery that they need to solve, but things quickly turn a little bit too real when they start to be picked off one by one. I really wanted to love this, but unfortunately it fell a little bit short for me. I'm starting to think that maybe this author is not for me because I don't think I've ever rated one of their books higher than a three. Might be giving up on them, but I just couldn't get behind this. I didn't understand why this group of friends even tried to come together for a weekend because their relationships were just so frayed at that point. It just seemed a little bit silly in my head. There was just way too much drama in this and it just got to a point where I could not care less if they all were murdered in the end. So it was a very quick read. I read it in one sitting, but I do think that the murderer was fairly obvious right from the beginning of the book, which also brought my enjoyment down. So 2.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I read for the month of April is Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Echo Brown, who is a wizard from the east side, and this is essentially her learning how to wield her magic. I really loved how this was semi-autobiographical, and it was essentially outlined as the life lessons that a young wizard must learn. It follows the author Echo Brown through her life from the ages of about 3 or 4 4 to 18, but it throws a magical realism spin on it. I think that this covered a lot of difficult topics such as racism, rape, addiction, depression, black womanhood, poverty, and so much more in a very real, raw way. 
I think that the metaphors that this author chose to describe her life and the situations that she was put through was just incredible and so well thought out. It's definitely a very hard read but I think that it has a very powerful message. I listened to this one on audiobook. It is read by the author herself and I think that that is the way to go for this book a thousand percent. I do think that it jumped around a lot which could have been confusing but I also think that it might have been a artistic choice to outline the book this way to kind of show the unstable life that the author was going through but I could just be reading too much into it. Overall extremely powerful read. I gave it a four out of five stars. If you're going to read it definitely check it out on audiobook. Alright everybody so those were the last seven books that I read for April 2024. I read a total of 13 books so if you are interested in the first six then that link will be down below. Like I said let me know if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!